it's DIY Gemini, and today we're making a swivel tuck-away table. Let's go. Okay, guys, we are back outside, and it's finally cool enough to be outside and woodworking again, so I'm really excited to get back to woodworking. Um, we are going to be making a swivel desk. So right now my room is pretty limited in space, and you see me work on the like foldable table, which is fine. Um, but I wanted to be able to easily like, set things up and have a table ready and I don't have to like fumble with the legs and stuff and folding. I think I had a genius idea, so let's see if this works out. So <laughs> let's get started. I'm also really excited to do this project because, like I said, I've worked on that lifetime table. I also work on it outside. I work on it in there for crafts as well. So now I have a dedicated work table. So I live in a smaller apartment in the city, so I don't have a lot of space for a full-on workbench. So my parents, for my birthday, got me this Bora table. So it comes with this collapsible legs that opens up like this, and you can use flat piece of plywood. You can also use anything you liked as a work surface. They actually got me a MDF board that comes with it. I'm super excited to use this. So thanks mom and dad. Appreciate you. Here is my plan. Where my three cabinets are to the left of my bed in my bedroom, I have this, this cabinet here, right? So what I want to do is build a table that's an L shape that can stay tucked in when I don't need it but also swing out when I do. Um, that way I have a table that I can work with, but also put it away if I don't need it. And then this is the top view. I'm gonna to try if I can do a curved edge for the end. We'll see how that goes first. There were a lot of options that I could have used for the top of this table. A solid piece of wood would have been really expensive. It would have been really nice though. Uh, so I wasn't trying to do that. I was trying to do as many like secondhand things that I could get as possible for this project. So let me go get that. Oh. So in case you don't know, this is a door. This is an old door. I got it from Habitat for Humanity. That was honestly the first place I checked. Uh, for a big piece of wood, I think the door is like a perfect option because it's flat already. Um, I'm gonna repaint this obviously. This one is hollow, so it's very light, and it's basically two pieces of veneer, in a sense, and then supports on the inside. They did have some solid wood doors. They were $75. This one was hollow, and then that was $25 for this door. So, mm, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So let me cut it to size, and let's see what it looks like on the inside, and we'll go from there. So anyways, we have our two pieces. We have the longer piece that's going on top of my cabinet. And then we have the shorter piece that's gonna be going in an L formation on the ends like that. And that is gonna be what's attaching to, like gonna be in contact with the floor. In case you want to see what the inside of a hollow door looks like, it is literally two pieces of veneer we have some wood framing on the ends. I cut off that one, but, and then there's basically just cardboard to space the veneers out. You're probably asking, what am I using to do the swiveling action? So I wanted to keep this as simple as possible and also accessible as possible. Uh, I've seen a couple options of using like PVC pipe and piping to use that as the, is it the fulcrum? Wait, what is the actual like engineering physics term? Is it fulcrum? I don't know. The thing, and then there's this the axis. Yeah, that. Stay in school, kids. Okay, we, I could have done that, but I thought, why not use a lazy Susan? Right? Doesn't that make sense? Like this thing this way, right? 
I got this one from Goodwill for $5.99. It's bamboo, and I think it should work. Uh, I just have to trim it down to size because this is 13 inches wide. This is a little wider than that. Let's trim this down to size and then figure out how I'm going to make the rounded edge because I want to make it to match this somewhat on the end. So have it a little bit of design and not like just straight cuts. So the idea is we have our Lazy Susan and then we have our tabletop, right? Basically attaching to the Lazy Susan so it gets swing back and forth. And then we'll have a support on the end and attach that to wheels that connects to the floor. And that's going to help us support our table um, as another leg when it's extended and in use. But what I want to do is make a curved aspect to this so it doesn't look so square, right? It adds a little bit of fun, a little bit of element, a little bit of design, um, and an inspiration of the roundness of the Lazy Susan. Why not? We'll try it out. All right, so this is the top portion of our table. I have the open end here and the open end here. This is the closed end of the table, which I'm gonna leave alone. because That's gonna be the end that attaches to the vertical piece. So we're gonna do it on our open end. I'm in the middle of our uh, table. So mine is 13 inches wide. So our middle here is 6.5. And then we're also going to do 6.5 down as well. So 6.5 down this way. And I created a little template, right? So this is our pilot hole that was going to put our nail in. And that's what's going to attach to this. This is the center of our circle or our semicircle in this case. And then 6.5 is going to be right here in between our six and a seven. I just drew, I just made holes an inch apart from each other down the line. And I can use this for other projects as well. You're going to take any screw, preferably like a thinner, a thinner one, nothing crazy. All right. So see our six and a half goes to the edge here as well. And we'll put our pencil in our six and a half mark. We'll draw a semicircle all the way around. <laughs> it's a little, a little choppy, but it's all right. Cool. And yeah, now we have our semicircle. So our next step is to cut this out with our jigsaws. Since our door is hollow, I need to add some framing back into the door and find a way to close it up. To do so, I punched some of the cardboard and inserted some scrap wood to frame the long side of the open end and used some smaller scrap wood pieces for the curved edge. I used wood glue and my nail gun to put it all in place. And if you don't have a nail gun, clamps works just as well. To fill the rest of the gaps, we're going to use my trusty joint compound and sand it down. You can also use this foam spray to fill the gaps as well. Okay, so it is day two. It is still super hot. It is 95 degrees right now, so forgive me if I am crazy looking today. Um, so we are going to sand everything up, then paint it. I have some leftover satin paint that I had from a previous project, so I'm just going to use that. It's just like a warm white color, and um, let's get to it.
After two coats of paint, we're back inside to install the casters on the vertical piece. And I opted for two and a half inch fixed casters here. Okay. So our next step is adding this vertical section here. Added a level just to make sure it was level. And it should be 30 inches total from here to there. So we're going to attach our vertical piece to our horizontal piece just with some simple L brackets. If you had a solid piece of wood, you could use any type of joinery you'd like, um, like pocket holes or something. But since this is hollow and the only points that are having some, some structure inside are just the sides here. So that's why I'm focusing just mainly on the sides. So our arched end is on that side, which is off camera. We have our end here that's straight Cool, I'm freaking stoked. This is coming together. <laughs> Attach the Lazy Susan to our table. I'm just gonna use construction adhesive. Normally I would like to screw something on here, but since the door is hollow, there's nothing for me to screw into other than the edges here. So this is just gonna go in the center. So I'm just gonna do a bead basically all the way around. Let's flip this guy over and try to line it up where we had it. Cool. So to hold that together, let's clamp it. So this will take overnight to cure and fully harden. So we'll just leave it clamped as is. And we will see you next on the next day. <laughs> so after attaching the vertical piece and our horizontal piece with L brackets on the inside, I also ended up doing three screws on the top just to have some security on the top. I'll end up painting these over as well. And then just to close this little gap, we're just going to use some caulking and paint over that you know what's funny? I actually got inspired to make this table by watching the show that came out on Netflix, I think like a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was called Hack My Space. The ideas were there, right? But the chemistry of the hosts were not, not it. <laughs> so I couldn't really get through that show, but it just like, it just inspired me to be using my space in a lot smarter way. So I was going back and forth on how to attach the table to the cabinet. And honestly, there were so many options. Like I could have screwed it from the bottom. I could have put bolts from the bottom and screwed it on that way. But this cabinet is an Ikea cabinet and this top, it it's very, uh, it's also hollow, just like the door in the inside is just cardboard. Um, so it's not going to be like a solid piece of wood where I can screw it and it's going to be properly mounted. I feel like if I were to screw it on through the cardboard, it's not going to really grab onto anything. So it's going to be eventually ripping out of my cabinet and I don't want to do that. But I actually found these mounting strips. They say they're really strong and I think this should hold since this table is so light anyways. I'm not going to be doing a lot of heavy duty work on this table. Um, for example, like I can't really use my Cricut, I don't think, on this. Like I wouldn't, because the Cricut's really heavy. Um, sewing is going to be a little bit more heavy duty, so I wouldn't be able to do that on that. But like if I was just crafting or if I was working on my laptop, editing, or just watching TV um, while I sit down, I think that this is what I'm mainly using this table for. So I think this should work. And I think I should be able to remove it a lot easier with like a hair dryer or something and heat up the glue and like melt it away. We'll see if I need something more secure, I probably will end up using construction adhesive, but I'm going to try this first. It's cut use it for a couple months and see how it goes. All right. To reduce damage to the table and the cabinet, we're going to put some painter's tape on both of those surfaces as a barrier from the adhesive mounting sticker. After marking the right position of the table in relation to the cabinet, we're ready to mount. Hold for 30 seconds, and I ended up putting a weight on it overnight to really secure the bond. Now, let's see how our table turned out. We are 
done with our table and I'm really, really, really stoked on how it came out. It came out so nice and it's simple and easy to construct. I think there are a couple things I would have done differently. Um, so I think I would have opted to choose a solid door despite it being more expensive um, than getting a hollow one just because the hollow one had a little bit more difficult time joining the two pieces together because I can't just screw the two pieces because they're just two pieces of veneer so it was a lot harder. Even though it was more costly I think it would have been easier to handle and less fragile because the veneer on the door ended up chipping a lot and um, it was just being very fragile when I moved it around especially because it's older and reclaimed. All in all though I love how this table turned out because it was very simple to construct, like I said. I think it's very approachable for anyone to do. Any variations of this can be done to whatever shape or size and dimensions that you may need. I also love that it's very inconspicuous in my room. Like I can have it just hidden in the behind on the cabinets and you can't really tell that it's there. And it gives me more surface area to use and work with when I have the two sides together. Um, or the two sides in an L shape, which is really nice. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I hacked my own space here and trying to utilize as much space that I can in my room, but also just make it function on how I like it. Yeah, I'm really glad to be back to woodworking and I've missed it. It's just been so hot. Um, so I'm really glad to be back and um, I've made previous woodworking videos before, like the Urban Outfitters uh, Isabel side table do that we've done before. Um, I plan on having a couple more woodworking, woodworking videos in the future. So I have one coming up that's also outdoors. So I'm really, really excited to show you guys that. So thank you again for watching this video. Uh, catch me on Instagram and TikTok for some other like behind the scenes stuff. I will see you at the next one. Bye.